So I think if we refresh the screens, it'll be able to, um, I might have to like go in and come back to refresh it. So because it should pop up here in a second. <gasps> All right. There we go. There we awesome. are. Awesome. Okay, so we are all taking a moment here look at that. to uh, turn around and share the broadcast out with everybody. So if you actually are in right away, if you could give us just a quick second while we turn around and share, uh, share the broadcast out, we'd really appreciate it. And for those of you who actually might be popping in, thank you so much for popping in with us today. This is our first episode of the Define Her Story talk show. Okay. Let's see here. Watch us live. Okay, and then I've got to do... Let's see if my... Yay, it is cooperating with me. Sometimes it cooperates with me, like when I start typing in somebody's name, and it, you know, it pulls it up, and other times it doesn't. This couch. is not, by the way, how we're going to carry this conversation throughout no. the whole <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, Through our phones. Like, well, like, on the phone. And, and, and I hate phone. that. I hate that, but it's so, I know, isn't it kind of crazy? It's like, oh I, gosh, I wish but... we could schedule the post, but we can't, so. Yeah. Bear no, with that us. would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, that would be cool. Be sure We've got five viewers right now. Awesome. Just, I think that might be all of us, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's awesome. That's okay. That's all right. Awesome. So It's going up. Okay, so while, um, while we're finishing up with sharing and everything like that, I'd like to introduce everyone who is uh, on the panel with us today. Mm -hmm. So we have Alicia Elatasi. This is her fabulous Thinking Girls Boutique that we are actually broadcasting from. So thank you very much for uh, letting us do this here. We thank appreciate you for it. letting it's beautiful. me host. Absolutely. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. location. Thank by you. the way, if you haven't been here, you need to stop by. 1570 South Dairy Ashford. Uh, and then we have Mitra Mistofi. She is the author of This Was No Coincidence, so thank you very much for being with us. We also have Lakeisha Sabra. Oh, Sab it's okay. I it's just okay. messed it up. It's I was okay. doing so well earlier. <laughs> so well. Um, online visibility strategist. Yes. So you teach people how to like get found online, right? I am. I am. I'm a magician. Just call oh. me nice. a magician. A virtual yes. magician. There we go. <laughs> I like that. I like that. We also have Sophia Jorsky. She is a, okay, tell me, which year are you in the University of Houston? Junior. Junior year. That's what I thought. 18 year old junior. Oh, wow. uh, I think I'm 19 now. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a teenager. She is also, uh, she is also the founder and owner of the Summertime Cakery. Delicious desserts. Get your cakes and cupcakes there. And then we have the ever so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Randy Seifert of Hollywood Hippie. And then there is me, Christina Mead, nerdy girl and woman advocate of Nerdy Girl Supplies. So today what we're talking about is um, the other B word. And if you're not sure what the other B word is, the other B word is bossy. And before I really get into um, the, where this kind of came from for this topic for this talk show today, I want to just get a little bit of background of who's sitting here. So just by show of hands real quick, like who's ever been called bossy before? What? I was going to say, I'm like, wow, really? You've never been called bossy before? Not to my <laughs> face, no. <laughs> then, there's, then there's that. Oh, or I tuned it out. <laughs> so what's the, so anybody, so what is the youngest age you remember being called bossy? Well, I can actually remember. It wasn't actually the word bossy, but it I knew that that's probably what they meant by it. It was more sassy, mm -hmm. right? And so it was about when I was about seven or eight years old, I had this amazing personality, but I still do, of course. <laughs> um, and so I was always doing something, rather it was dancing or playing or running around the house or whatever. And I remember, I can't remember exactly who in my family, who was a family friend or somebody else, that said, she's so sassy. Mm. But it wasn't in a derogatory or mean type okay. way. It was just, you know, like I just have some sass to me. And so I felt like maybe that was probably on the side of bossy, mm -hmm. right? Sassy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's a sexy version of bossy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, like, that I'm like, I don't know if I would mind being called sassy. <laughs> I'm the oldest of four kids, oh so I've goodness. always been called bossy. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, and then when I got married, my kids call me bossy, so I'm bossy all the time. And I've never taken offense by it at mm -hmm. all, because I always felt like I was a boss. 
Right. I was always bossing people mm-hmm. around because I needed things to get done. So, right. hey, I'm going to boss you around. You're going to get it done. <laughs> and they hated it. Like, my brothers and my sisters, mm-hmm. I mean, my sister hated it. She was like, oh, there you go again, being bossy. I'm like, yeah, well, we need to get stuff done. You know, I'm the <laughs> oldest. My mom would right. be in charge of them. So, there right. you go. Right. So, I never exactly. really took took it as a bad thing ever. Yeah. 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 It was, was in kind the of same funny. boat as you. Just I, I have five younger siblings. So, you know, I, I'm have no problem being in charge Mm -hmm. and that kind of translates into other situations besides just younger siblings so if somebody calls me boss or refers to me as a boss it's like okay i am the boss so i'm doing my job great (laughs) affirmation check mark done Done. (laughs) we took ownership of it without Mm -hmm. really feeling like hurt by it right it's just Mm -hmm. i'm the boss and that's an adjective so that's good yeah it was good i see being being an Hmm. only i mean i remember being called bossy but Pretty much everybody in my life. Mm. I think Kids. all children tend to be very bossy. <laughs> <laughs> See, and it's and I remember it being like I remember not liking being called like the way that the tone of voice that was being used when I was being called bossy. Mm-hmm. It was definitely not a positive. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I really cared, mm-hmm. but I know that it wasn't something that they were saying to me and that they they meant it as a compliment. That it was mm-hmm. something that was nice, that kind of thing. And I think as I got older, um, I think that. As adults, we tend to use different words mm-hmm. when face to face with somebody of right. like describing that, and then you know, and then uh, again, as you get older, you really get called the other B word. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's just kind of that kind of thing. Brandy, have you, have you ever been called bossy? Um, as a kid, I don't. I don't remember. I was kind of a little opposite, but as I got older, I took on management positions and and. Yes, and I actually didn't like it. I didn't think it was a compliment. <laughs> I mean, I did think I was doing my job, but I was like, golly, I'm looking out for you guys. Do you realize how much I'm doing? <laughs> so, um, yeah, for me, it wasn't really a compliment. I was kind of offended, but, um, yeah, whatever. Still doing my job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so it didn't stop any of us. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason, uh, so this is kind of where um, where I came from with, with coming up with the topic for, for today's show was, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, um, oh, my gosh, Cheryl Sandberg's mm-hmm. ban bossy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So actually a few years ago started the whole movement of banning the word bossy. And so I came across it with, you know, with my stuff what I'm doing with Nerdy Girl Supplies. And so I thought, oh, well, you know, I want, I want to see some other research. What are some other statistics? You know, who else is doing research with women and girls being called bossy? And I came across another study who actually was doing some comparison with uh, Cheryl Sandberg's uh, ban bossy. They were looking exclusively at uh, bossy in the workplace and is it gender related that kind of thing mm-hmm. so the first thing that they did with these people who were in the workplace is they asked them like okay so when you're calling somebody bossy what are some of the characteristics because Cheryl Sandberg is like when girls are called bossy they're really demonstrating leadership skills so that right. was their first thing that they were looking at and what they found was that what people were saying is that like well if somebody's bo- when I call them bossy they're being rude they're micromanaging they're being aggressive mm-hmm. so it's like okay So then as you keep going through, and then it's like, okay, so then who are you describing as bossy? And this is where I kind of started, things started kind of rolling for me. um, Because things that they were saying, and I want to make sure that I kind of get it right here. But things that they were saying um, were that they were calling men, men were getting called bossy, as well as women, Mm -hmm. for the same characteristics. Mm -hmm. However, women were being called bossy twice as often as men were. Mm -hmm. Um, And that... um, also, across that, there was, um, so is it damaging to the career of a woman or of a man who's mm-hmm. being called bossy? And they found that, it again, it's detrimental, but again, mm-hmm. more so it's for women, women than it was for men. And so, like, the, the thing that kind of, like, through all of that, what hit me the most is that, like, so their conclusion was that, you know, Cheryl Sanborn's her conclusion, don't call anybody bossy. Their conclusion was, like, yeah, tell people to not use the word bossy, but then also discourage people from, uh, discourage men and women from doing those bossy characteristics. And I was like, so slow your roll there for just a second because like, you're, you're now taking the assumption yeah. Yeah. that women are twice as often to be this bossy yeah. in the workplace than men are. And I'm like, so my question to you guys, and that's where this came from, is that are women really twice as likely to be those characteristics or is it twice as likely that we are perceived mm. to be those mm-hmm. characteristics mm-hmm. where we really are doing some of our leadership um, characteristics where we're really helping direct, like these are the things that need to get done and, and letting people know this is your role with getting things done and yeah. you're not doing your role. And is that then because it's coming from a woman instead of a man 
now we're seen as micromanaging. So that's that's one of the, I'm like, that was my thought, but it's like, I want to hear from other people. From, yeah. Oh my gosh. By the way, please comment, um, ask questions. This is an interactive talk show. So if you've got thoughts about this as well, please, um, please tune in. So for you guys, so what do you, what do you think? Are, are we really uh, more likely to be bossy in the workplace or are we just being perceived that way? I like to, I like to say that, you know, there's an important distinction in the characters, characteristics of a female and a male in a workplace in the, in the sense that we're very meticulous, you know, I mean, not to, not to say that men aren't meticulous, but we pay attention to details and, you know, but whereas men are really great at looking at the overall picture, mm -hmm. looking at the end goal. And so, yeah, we get perceived as bossy because we're looking at nitpicking every detail we might come across as, you know, micromanaging. So we come across as bossy, whereas, no, we're actually doing our job. Mm -hmm. I think I women agree. also Point. tend to assert themselves a little bit more because mm -hmm. they have to kind of prove that they can do the job. Oh, wow. So yeah. I think, you know, mm -hmm. it's probably something that just happens instinctively. Mm -hmm. You're not really thinking about being bossy, but you want to kind of show mm -hmm. that yeah. you have the skills, you have what it takes to be the boss. Mm -hmm. You know, so we kind of do that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. I agree, especially in corporate America. You just, I mean, when you show up and you show up, you know, people always speak about being their authentic selves, right? But as women, when we show up and we are our authentic selves and we bring that into a corporate workspace, then that's perceived as being bossy, mm -hmm. right? Because we, like you said, right, we are meticulous. Like we go into the details and we're saying, you know, what the things that need to be done, whereas men generally do look at the broader picture, right? Just to get it done. We are actually showing you what you need to do to get it done. And so I think that's where the whole <clears throat> bossiness comes yeah. from, right? Mm -hmm. Because we really right. hold high regards, not that men yeah, don't. micromanaging yeah. a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, sometimes there are some approaches that are more stereotypically a male approach and some that are more stereotypically a female approach. So if we have more women joining the workforce, then obviously I think both sides have to kind of figure out a way to you know, work together optimally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I, I am still in school, so I haven't had a whole lot of work experience, but just working in different groups and all, realizing that sometimes I need to adapt my leadership approach when I'm leading a study group or some sort of in-class discussion that, you know, different groups, different classes, you need different leadership approaches. So different people, you just have to adapt it and kind of see how are they perceiving this. Because that's what this whole discussion is about, okay. is how are people perceiving being called bossy. Exactly. Yeah. So also kind of taking the other side of that and going, okay, how are people perceiving me? How can I adjust that perception? A little bit mm -hmm. of self-awareness. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of mm -hmm. self-awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm an author, and I write about <laughs> self-awareness. <so. laughs> I just totally took over that. But it does come across oh, that it's you have to self be yeah. self-aware. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because then that's always going to be out there. People Absolutely. are going to think it, and they're going to say it. Mm -hmm. Right. So just kind of like, okay, am I being a little right. too bossy? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I've never had the job title or the pay grade of a boss, but yeah. I've definitely been bossy. And for me, being bossy has been a feeling. It's not so much a label, yeah. but it's been a mm -hmm. feeling. And I don't like that feeling. Yeah. When I'm when I'm self-aware to it, you yeah. know, I don't like the feeling. I, I think, um, you know, it's not just the semantics of the word itself, you know, being an author again, I'm a, a word nerd, and hey. we support each other in our right. nerd <laughs> mission. But um, you know, it's not the semantics. Sometimes words can be very forgiving, and sometimes completely indelible yes. right. to what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I think it goes also with the like the yin and the yang, with the female and the male energy, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have a little of both, and so do men, right? Men have that feminine type energy as you know and, and we have their energy and I think it's that whenever we're using that male and energy it's kind of like a more dominant energy mm -hmm. we're looked at as bossy mm -hmm. right yes. mm -hmm. taking the initiative yes. doing right. those type mm -hmm. of things when it's not really we don't really we don't want to be perceived as being bossy we're not trying to be bossy but we're just taking on that male energy right? right and that's something that we have it's not something that we can really get rid of so and we shouldn't get rid no, of it exactly. right that's a great exactly trait to have. Yeah. yeah so i think whenever they are taking that into consideration they should take that into consideration whenever right. they're talking about we should be less than or whatever it was that you said that they said yeah, yeah.
Exactly. Well, like, and I was thinking this morning, you know, prepping for, for this morning and everything. So I was trying to remember, like, in my adult, in the workplace where I had been called bossy or probably not. I'm like, in my adult life, I'm like, I don't think I've ever been called bossy to my face. Me either. Right. I know behind my back. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> like, I was a department head, that kind of thing. And I'm like, right. okay, so those instances where I feel like I probably was called that, I'm like, I feel almost like I was driven to it. Because, like, I was department yeah. head. Like, that's the last time that I really kind of feel like I was probably called bossy. I was department head. I'm trying to get people to do things. So you've got these things. And so I'm, okay, so here, and I'm trying to treat everybody like an adult. Mm -hmm. Just here you go. This is stuff you got to do. And then it's not getting done, so I'm coming back. And then it's not coming down. And I'm being nice about it the first, like, five times. And now it's, like, the time that I'm being called bossy, I'm like, for the love of God, <laughs> would you please just get this done? Yeah. And that now, now. Am I being rude? Absolutely. Oh. Am I micromanaging? <laughs> Absolutely. Am I aggressive? You betcha I am. But it's like, because the first five times you didn't hear exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that happens a lot with women too, is that yeah. we're coming into, especially when we know we're coming into a male dominated place, mm -hmm. it's like, I've got to be, to be mm -hmm. heard. And then we're getting that whole perception of then now we're yeah. bossy. There's right. another thing mm -hmm. also that happens when women decide they're not going to work for another woman because, oh, <sighs> she's going to be such a bossy right. bee, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you're <laughs> like, oh, you know, I'd rather work for a man because I know he's not going to be competitive. I know he's not going to feel like I'm going to be taking his place. Mm -hmm. Like that's another thing that happens between women. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. even within the workspace, even within teachers, I yeah. mean, even within anywhere. Even I mean, within just businesses. With businesses yeah. 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 Yes. But I, I don't think we should, you know, put up this wall and cut off all of our opportunities no. and say, mm -hmm. you know, I can't work with her because she's a female. I Right now, I work with a great guy, but our dynamic works well mm -hmm. with each other because he sees the big picture and, mm -hmm. he, you know, he, he he's remiss to all the little details and I'm really great at the so little details. it's a detail. great balance. Oh, right. it's yeah. really a great balance. Now, is, you know, is that the case for all situations with not, guys? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so we shouldn't cut off our opportunities just because we have these labels on people. I've had great mm -hmm. women bosses. Me I've too. loved yeah. them. Mm -hmm. right, right. When I wanted to ask Brainy too, because like, they, you know, you bring up the point of like not wanting to work with other women, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much exclusively as far as like with your makeup artist, that's all you oh, work yeah. with. So and how I am is bossy. that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How and is so is your whole team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they are. I wouldn't know because I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, ask the question again. What? But just kind of wondering, like, so how do you find it? Do you find that, you know, that there maybe are certain makeup artists that you don't want to work with because you know they're bossy, or do you feel that they're that they have that perception of mm. you that they don't want to, like, because that's yeah. pretty much who you're working with. Yeah. Is like all women. It depends on the job. Um, if it's something I have to lead, and if they are going to be that way, I, I, I can't have that happening it's yeah. got to be fast it's got to be quick and it, it's just you've got to kind of do what I'm saying um, because maybe I have a certain look that needs to happen or whatever mm -hmm. um, it just depends on the job I'm not opposed to, I mean I like working with all kinds yeah. of women but yeah if I have someone that's just kind of kind of button heads with me then I, I can't yeah 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 it, it's my it's my show <laughs> when I'm doing it you know so um, you know it's just kind of yeah, the way absolutely. it is so um but I was going to say earlier, um, uh, you and I, we've worked a lot on different gigs and whatnot, and um, not until I, I've kind of heard these kind of discussions that it really opened my eyes and that I kind of was judgmental, and I would often think women are boss, even though I was a boss myself. Um, but I started doing something in my head. I would visualize a female as a, uh, in, uh, as a male instead mm -hmm. and think, would I, would I still think that person's bossy? Yeah. And because I think um, even if women aren't, um, do, don't have certain characteristic, characteristics like we were talking about earlier, even if they are quiet, they can still be perceived, they can still be talked about just because they're female. And it's, mm -hmm. so, yeah. it's so sad. Like, you're just doing your freaking job. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's so oft, oftentimes I, you kind of open my eyes in that area. So thank you. Sure. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of visualize like, well, no, they're, they're I just think they're needs to be more awareness that we should empower each other. Absolutely. You know, I think that's really what it comes down to. And I think sometimes we live in a like a little bubble in our head and we just think, oh, she's a Right. Gonna say it. <laughs> I know, I'm like, unfortunately, I don't have the three second delay. To <laughs> there's no, there's no, uh, what do they call that? The buzz out or the, right. yeah, the, yeah, the bleep. <laughs> we should like have little like filters, like boop, <laughs> pop it up oh, over, cool. over, over, <laughs> yeah. Our house, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's really important that 
regardless of any past experience that you've had, to just come in and not come in with a chip on your shoulder. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of go, okay, let's assess this situation and see what's going Mm -hmm. on here and how I'm going to lead here or how I'm going to be a team player. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to lead all the time. Sometimes you do need to be a team player. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not going, oh, I'm not going to work for her because she's going to boss me around, not doing that. Just kind of taking each situation separately that if you, you know, go in, treat people the way you want to be treated, and lead people the way you would like to be led, or follow a leader the way you would like to be followed as a leader, right. that I think a lot of these problems would probably go away. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. One but I know, if you just be nice. That's my whole thing, just be nice to one another. <laughs> <laughs> how do we, you, know? how do we em- you said empowerment. Yeah. How do we empower each other? Let, you know, let's think in a practical sense. Right. If we were to work with each other, and you or I, whichever, it was bossy, Mm -hmm. Um, and we know this from the team, like not necessarily my opinion of you being bossy, but you know, just hearing people and getting the impression that they're not getting the job done because they're so intimidated. Right. So how would I approach you to empower you to get your work done and get, you know, have a better, um, perspective on your job title, right. how would I em- empower you? Of course, not in a public right. setting, oh, yeah, but right. privately, how would I empower you? Privately, I think it's giving the person the heads up, like, hey, I, I want you to just kind of know that, not saying right or wrong, just saying that this is a little bit of a perception that's going on here. Mm-hmm. How can you and I maybe work together to help shift some pers- perceptions mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that we were now becoming that cohesive team that we need Mm -hmm. in order to get this job done because you know you're the head of this and so we need to do this so that way not only do we look good but you look good as well so how can we do this you need us we need you Mm -hmm. kind of thing so just bringing that awareness I think in a manner of which it's like I'm just trying to help like how can I help that kind of thing because I would think I know that um before like I've had um I've had a female boss a principal tell me, "Do you're bossy, and you need to cut it out." And I gotta say that while she was right, I probably wasn't the most receptive to that, to that particular <laughs> delivery. Right. Because you know what I mean? That's exactly. Being like, bossy in itself, right. you know, to mm-hmm. rehash that True. word. You exactly. Know? So it's just kind of like, so it's like, okay. So then, just again, like I said, you know, going back and thinking about it, it's like, okay, yeah. But, you know, there, there's a mm-hmm. way that it could have been handled mm-hmm. where I would have been more receptive to listening and, like, okay, because, again, mm-hmm. like I said, I, I completely you turned out. Like, yeah. 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 yeah we get defensive. Too. Always <laughs> connecting to the mission that you have together. Right. Mm-hmm. Always exactly. connecting to that mission. Always connecting to that goal. Where are we trying to go? Mm-hmm. What are we trying to do? You want to do the best job. I want to do the best job. How can we work together? How can we make that happen? Absolutely. We both have the same goals. We both want to reach that. Let's see how we can do it together. Mm -hmm. I think as a leader and I think as a boss, you have to really be Mm self-aware. You have to always be considering, okay, how am I coming across? Am I giving direction in a compassionate way? Am Mm -hmm. I being too strong? But -hmm. I think that's okay because that's important. Like that's Mm -hmm. that's a that's a boss trait that I would look for. That's mm-hmm. what I want to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, finding something mm-hmm. positive when you have to give yeah. a negative. Like, I had a piano teacher for 10 years, you know, all the way up until I graduated high school. And I play classical and Christian piano, so I have some songs that are, you know, over 15 pages long. So the first time I play it for him, there's a lot wrong. But he would prioritize, okay, what are the top three things wrong? And then what are a couple things that you're doing well? Mm-hmm. And you don't have to fix everything all at once. Um, that's something that I have a problem with. Is I want everything <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, and, and you know, you you don't have to have it all at once. Yes. So you're saying if he was to be bossy with you, he would demand all of it at once. Exactly. Got so it. he would just yeah. prioritize. Okay, do th- these three things, and then mm-hmm. once we've got that, we'll start working mm-hmm. on stuff that isn't as important as the first three things. Mm-hmm. Because if you give someone a list of every single thing they're doing wrong exactly. and how they need to fix it. Yeah. If we look at the dictionary definition of bossy, that would fit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a teacher, we would be with the parents. We'd always yeah. give them the good points yep. before yeah. we went into mm-hmm. them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So now I want to flip it a little bit because, um, so we've been talking about women in the workplace and being called bossy and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So as a teacher, one of the things that I know when you look at the band bossy website, which is a really cool website, it's got some really cool activities and that kind of thing. But, um, one of the reasons why it, it struck a chord with me is because I rem- I saw those characteristics in my female students because I taught junior high school. Mm-hmm. So them not wanting to take the lead, not wanting to raise their hand, 
all of that kind of stuff, which then it's like, so okay, hey, so some of it is because they're shy or whatever, but how much of it is because of the fact that um, they've been chastised, called whatever, because they were um, doing something that they felt that they were taking the lead and then they were called bossy or they've had a negative experience and so now they're wanting to step back. They don't like taking the lead. They If, if they're given the lead for like a project mm -hmm. or whatever or if, um, you know, if they're given the option, they don't. Most girls don't take it and they're very quiet about that. So then what kind of, what can we do as women, as, as moms, as aunts, whatever, as, you know, sisters, what can we do to kind of what advice or how do we help with these girls who are, that we see start shrinking back from leadership and that mm -hmm. being that, or they come home and they cry and they say, you know, they call, you know, the kids were mean to me today. They call me bossy. How do we take that and, and turn that into a way of empowering our girls so when they are, when they meet that adversity, that it's okay, they know how to cope with it? I oftentimes say the sole purpose of a child is to see how much power they have up until 18. So you've passed that mark. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, if you think of, you, you know, their actions in, in like group settings and, and with their little friends, they're just constantly trying to see how much power they have, how much power they have over their parents. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will be quick to call a little kid out and mm -hmm. say they're bossy regardless if they're a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. But the distinction is adulthood. Yeah. We're not at, you know, by 19, you know, in an ideal world, yeah. we like to think that we, we know how powerless we can be and we know how much influence we can have in the world. Mm -hmm. But to, you know, in, just overbearingly try to control and bulldoze a situation, um, that's not leadership, you right. know. So mm -hmm. I think with kids, you know, I think there's a lot of sportsmanship in leadership. Mm -hmm. Leaders actually listen to mm -hmm. what the team is saying versus right. bossy, you know, being bossy doesn't, you know, it's all self-preserving. One of the recent um, things I've been thinking about is how my life and how my role in all the leadership roles that I carry, how would that be different if I had played more sports mm -hmm. growing up? Because yeah. I've noticed that with my niece right now, she's in, um, in a basketball team you know, and she has great leadership skills. And she, when she was little, she was bossy. <laughs> but now I could see that it's converting into leadership because yeah. at the end of the game, they all want to win. It's right. not about who takes the ball and owns, you know, mm -hmm. all the points. It's about passing the ball, working as a team, and not bossing anybody around. So I would say get them out there on a, in a sports team. <laughs> awesome. yeah. That's, That's a great idea. good practical yeah. idea. Yeah. It um, is, absolutely. definitely. I'm putting on my glasses because thank you, Cindy Childress. She has uh, participated in our in our interaction here. She says, I have a direct report who's a collegiate football player and doesn't like to listen to me. He is the weakest player on my sales team. How would you approach him in a way that gets my mission accomplished? Okay, that totally just debunks my theory. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, never mind, cool. scratch that. Don't put your kids in, in sports. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, so who wants to take that? So, like, what would be, um, he's a weak player on the sales team. So, what's her, and he doesn't like to listen to her. Hoy, yeah, I feel your pain there. Um, so, the way to approach, I mean, part of my thing would be kind of like, one, one thing that I've learned through um, the different leadership positions that I have is that if you ever, you always praise publicly and criticize Privately, mm -hmm. so having the conversation with him, maybe privately about some things like, and even asking, what are some things you know? Do you feel like you are struggling with this? You know, what are, what are, what does he see as his role? That kind of thing and his performance, um, and asking him that way again, like I said, privately. But then also, um, it needs to be like, wh what is your sales team trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. I'm like, we, we've got to get here, and how do I help you? help us get there because I want you to be successful. Mm -hmm. I want us all to be successful because yeah. I'm like, yeah. if it's a sales team, you probably all have a quota that you're trying to reach and you've got yeah. Johnny here who's not pulling his weight. Um, so trying to see what he, what help he needs 
to get him there. Is there anybody else? I think one him? thing that would work would be something we used to do as a teacher as well is have them set their own goals so they have ownership of their mm -hmm. goals. Mm -hmm. yeah, and exactly. when they have ownership of their goals, they're more inclined to do it mm -hmm. as right. opposed to me telling him you have to do this, you have to do this. You have to. Okay, so what do you think? Write down the goals that you feel like are going to be important for our sales team, for our sales team, and have them go through them. And then you add some input to that mm -hmm. and then give some feedback. But have them have because I think one thing that happens with a lot of people is they don't they don't feel like they have ownership of anything right. they're not mm -hmm. recognized yeah and I think maybe just recognizing the good thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like a positive thing mm -hmm. and then just going from there so you know but you do really well at this mm -hmm. Absolutely. But let's set some goals let's, let's work let's on these you. areas yeah, yeah. Let's, work, let's yeah. do that yeah, yeah. yeah. One, exactly one of my business mentors said after each negative comment you give you should have three positives three positives yeah. yeah oh is that what you were gonna say no, no that's, that's what, what she, Sophia mm -hmm. said earlier oh yeah yeah, yeah. After, mm -hmm. okay yeah piggyback off that yeah so um anyway yeah so so it makes me think because sometimes I'm a little really direct and some negative feedback and so I because of the kind of work that I do where you know where time is of the essence to working on set or whatever so afterwards I kind of it, it's kind of the opposite I probably do negative <laughs> in public and praise in private Ugh. Yeah. so I have to work on that but it's kind of hard because we're we're doing right. a live show You're doing and everything exactly. yeah. Yeah. it's a different it's, situation it's, it's, yeah, yeah it's different you have to approach each situation differently. yeah it's, yeah. it's but different but I try to make sure that I can give as much um, positivity but the, as but your I purpose can. is still the same though you're trying to create good rapport you're trying yes. to create a good relationship mm -hmm. I mean if we had a good relation like we do have a good relationship but if we had like this you know just wonderful, wonderful relationship working with each other. I don't think I would take any offense to mm -hmm. anything you criticize mm -hmm. me about because I know it's going to be constructive. I know you're going to want the best for me. Yeah. So I think right. building that rapport is really, really important, it's, such yeah, as in yeah, her exactly. case, you know, um, I don't know, possibly change the language so that he can understand it better. There's an offense team, there's a defense team, you know, well, let's, <laughs> let's talk about the team yeah. that he likes, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because he's, he's being very defensive. He's playing defense. He's mm -hmm. not, he's not passing the ball. He's not playing yeah. offense. So, you know, sometimes we have to, you know, I don't know anything yeah, go about, to their yeah, level I don't know yeah. anything to about their, football, mm -hmm. but if my boss was, what you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll go study it. I'll go study a little bit about yeah. football to try to just exactly. speak his language mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I am, I am curious as to what is making him the weakest player. Is it because his skill level isn't to where it needs to be? Mm -hmm. Or is it like you were saying before, he doesn't really feel connected to it. He doesn't really care. He doesn't really mm -hmm. want to do this. Mm -hmm. So finding out too, like, why, what is it that's making him that weakest player and then working towards that? Because quite honestly, maybe one of the reasons why he doesn't want to listen is because he knows he's the weakest player on the sales mm, right. team. Yeah. And he's embarrassed by it. Mm -hmm. He's defending um, himself. Right. There's no offense to like dudes or whatever. I mean, chicks were the same way. Uh, just that the ego is very like, you don't like being oh, pointed yeah. out. So mm -hmm. You're doing yeah. something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yikes. You know, Especially so just, if he's the only one, like if yeah. he's like, if he's always being called in, yeah. um, I would yeah. recommend, you know, having a meeting mm -hmm. with him and not making it so much about what he's doing wrong or his mm -hmm. sales numbers, but letting him know that you are there to support him and then maybe come up with some type of action plan to help him, some type of steps to get him there so that he can achieve his goals. And so that he does feel like you're working with him and not against him. And then maybe even have him partner with a stronger sales, somebody on your sales team that's stronger, have mm -hmm. him partner with them for the day. Let them show him what it is that they're doing because mm -hmm. maybe he does know all the right things to do, right? But maybe he is feeling a little bit behind and when we feel yeah. a little bit behind we feel like well what's the use in catching up mm -hmm, because right. I'm just not going to meet my numbers anyway yeah. he feels defeated so maybe it has a lot to do with you know his morale the momentum motivation even mm -hmm. so I would say work with him one on one if you can mm -hmm. make an action plan for him and then maybe even have him um, work with a team member one of your other sales team members that are doing really well and so that they can also help him so it's all about support as well Absolutely. what type of support does he have and one of the things I always look at um, if someone needs a little help with their coaching is, do you have the tools needed to succeed? Yes. Let's look yeah. at that. Mm -hmm. um, and let's help you with that as well. And let's get you set up for success. Because yes. that's, that's really important instead of always drilling goals and whatnot. Let's make sure you're set up for success exactly. first. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, like I said, I, we we're going to try to keep this at 30 minutes okay. um, for this. And so we're right at our 30 minutes. Thank you so much for those of you who tuned in. If you're watching us on the replay, please feel free to put your comments, um, put your questions in. We'll all be, we've all been tagged in it, so we'll be watching to see um, and answer those questions for y'all. I hope you enjoyed it, and you guys have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>